Hi, welcome back to Therapy Designs. If you're new to this channel, my name is Kelly and this channel is all about teaching you how to create print-on-demand designs using Canva. So if that is something that you're interested in, please do stick around. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over how to create this design right here. It says, happy 100th day of kindergarten. 100 days of school is a big selling point every year, and it usually falls around January to February. So there's a lot of different fun ways to make 100th day of school designs. Uh, for this video, I specifically wanted to show you how you could use different types of masks um, in the text to sort of get that glitter look or that half glitter look. Um, and so this is just a really fun design that you can make and you can play around with lots of different variations. So if this is something that you would like to learn about, please do stick around. So as always, we're gonna start with our blank backdrop. It is 4,500 by 5,400 pixels and I will be designing on black today. So I'm gonna go ahead and select my background color up in the top left-hand corner. And we're just gonna go ahead and pick black. And now what we're going to be doing is a design for 100 days of school. 100 days of school is coming up in the first quarter, depending on the school district. It can be sometime between um, January and February, depending on the school district. But it is very popular every year, and you will see a ton of 100 day of school designs, both for students and teachers. So for today's design, I'm going to show you how to do a little like half glitter text. So we're gonna start off with some text. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hit T on my keyboard and it will pull up a text box. And the first line I want, and this is gonna be all caps, is gonna be happy. And so that's gonna be my first line way at the top. I'm gonna to pick a font in a second here. Next, I'm gonna hit T again, pull up another text box. This one is gonna say 100th, okay, there we go. And that's gonna go right underneath. And then I'm gonna pull up one more text box here. And then this one's all lowercase because I'm gonna do this one on a little bit of a script. So I wanna you know, change fonts, make it a little fun. So this is going to say day of, perfect. So, so far I've got happy 100th day of. Now here you can put anything you want. You can put school, you can put preschool, kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade. So there's a lot of ways we can scale this out. I am gonna show you with kindergarten because it is the most popular in kindergarten. Um, so we'll just go with that. So I'm gonna go ahead one more time, hit T on my keyboard. This time I'm gonna go ahead and go with kindergarten. Kindergarten. And I'm gonna make that two lines just like this. So this is what I am starting with. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick some fonts. So I want something a little bold, but I also want it to be, you know, sort of fun for kids. And so you can pick anything you want. There's different ways that you can do your searches. You can search for bold, you can search for kids, you can search for fun. All of these will come up with some different options for you. So for example, if I put kids in here, it'll also say right up here, fun and you'll see some really cool, fun kids fonts. And so there's a lot of different ways you can go and you can try out different ones. Remember, you do want it to be something that can be easily read. So some of these are really fun, but maybe not as easy to read. You do still want it to stand out from a distance, but you can see how we can sort of play with these and some of these are really fun. I am looking for something easy to read, but kind of bold, something like that looks cool. Matter of fact, I might actually like that one for the hundredth day. Let me go ahead and change all. Oops, I do like that for the hundredth. I think it looks really cool for the hundredth. I'm gonna go ahead and try some more for happy. I'm gonna put different fonts on every line here just to see what I can come up with. Uh, that one looks pretty cool. Um, as I come up, you can see how we can play with these. So I, um, you can spend a lot of time sort of looking for what you want. I don't wanna to spend too, too long because again, you know, time, money. But once you get a good um, template that you like, obviously you can then change it and do, um, you know, first grade, second grade, third grade, and you can use the same template for everything. So once you kind of figure out what you like, it's a lot easier. Um, so I'm just playing with some of these right now, seeing if there's anything really cool or fun that I wanna do. And again, it really doesn't matter. I could also come up here and just search bold and see what I come up with. And you're gonna get a lot of fun bold texts as well. Um, you can see some of those, that's gonna go all the way across the screen. That might look really cool. 
Um, so lots of different ways I can go with this. Pretty simple, straightforward there. Another one pretty straightforward there. So let's just say I keep the straightforward one for happy. And I am going to make it nice and big. And center it. And then 100th, again, I'm going to make that one pretty nice and big. Still going to center that one. Now I'm going to go with day of. For this one, I want something... I wanted it to be a little bit more script or handwritten. You can always put in script, you can put in handwriting, and you'll get different things. So if I put in handwriting or handwritten, I'm gonna get some, you know, different fonts that are also good for kids. You can see lots of more handwritten type stuff. And depending on the age, you might make it, you know, a little cuter a little more scribbly, and so you can do this a lot of different ways. I am kind of looking for a little bit of a sort of scripty look. Usually the hardest part of any design is sort of picking the elements that you want in it. I'm gonna go ahead and go with this one. It's pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Day of, still easy to read. I can go ahead and put that there. And then kindergarten, I actually like this font for the kindergarten, but I do want the kindergarten to be spaced closer together. So whenever we want the line spaced closer together, you can go up to the top where you have this little arrow up and down that says spacing. Here I can change the letter spacing or the line spacing. So for here, if I want to bring the line spacing closer together, I can just go ahead and drag it this way. And so I'm looking at something more like that, get the kindergarten grouped close together. And I do want the kindergarten to look nice and big. And again, I'm going to center it in the middle of the page. So, so far, this is what I've got. I'm going to go ahead, space these, put them exactly where I want them. And you know you're in the middle because a nice drop line will come down in the middle. If not, you can always use your rulers and guides on the sides here to make sure that everything's lined up and centered the way you want it. So there's a lot of easy ways you can play with this. Ooh, made a sale. <laughs> Love that sound, by the way. Um, for this design, I do want to leave a little space around the side because I'm thinking it might be fun to put in some designs for school, maybe some scissors, glue stick, pencil, something, you know, that might look a little fun. So I don't necessarily want to fill the entire page with my text. I do want a little bit of free space, but not too much free space, if you know what I mean. I do still want it to be nice and big. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a few different um, different ways that we can decorate these letters. Now, most of the time you'll just go through and pick a color and you know that's that's totally fine and okay. You can also do clipping masks on words to give it different looks. And you can do different clipping masks on different words. So it doesn't just have to be one clipping mask for the entire page. You can put a lot of clipping masks. So, for example, the first thing I'm going to do is just go ahead and download this. This is going to be my frame anyways. So I'm going to put happy 100th and I'm just going to put frame so that I know. I'll come up to the top where it says share. I'm going to hit download, transparent background. It's a PNG and we're going to download this one as is. That way I have a nice frame going. And then from here, I'm going to look for some um, cool masks that I can put over this. So for kindergarten, I want it to be sort of brightly colored. I'd like it to be glittery. So I'm going to come up to elements and I can do a search. And so I can put rainbow glitter, which is kind of what I'm going to go with. But again, you can search for anything. If you haven't spent a lot of time going through Canva's elements, you really should because there is just a ton of things. And so right off the bat, I see all these different ways that I can do rainbow glitter that might be kind of fun. And I kind of like this one here. That way the letters can kind of go progressing in color as opposed to top to bottom. And so I might do this as sort of a clipping mask right over kindergarten. So I need to make sure it completely covers what I want. And so right now it's completely covering the whole thing, but without overlapping onto anything else. So that's good. I'm going to move the words to the back. So I'm just going to put send to back. And so now this will be my clipping mask that's just going to go over kindergarten. Now I can keep going day of. I'm kind of still going with the glittery thing, maybe like a light silver. Let's see if I can come up with some silver glitter. And I can. You can see lots of different silver glitters that look really fun and cool. 
Um, I, you can also have ones that fade, and I kind of like this fade thing here. So for example, if I take this one, and I'm gonna just go ahead and flip it around so that the fade kind of starts at the top and comes down. And I'm gonna make it so that it goes right over day of. And this you do have to crop here because it's gonna completely cover that. So what we would have here would be a fade from sort of a darker silver all the way down to a lighter silver. And so something like that might look cool. Just make sure it's not too dark because again, if we're printing this on a black background, I wanna be able to see it. We can always put an outline around it too to make it easier to see. But let's say I wanted to do something like that. That's pretty cool here. So I'm gonna go ahead, um, I'll send the text to back. And so now I've got my silver glitter on top and I'm just gonna move up. Now I've got happy 100th. Again, I can do these all different too. Um, lots of different fun ways we can do this. Some of these you'll see the glitter that kind of comes down and fades out. And so some of those can be really fun. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go back to rainbow. You can always just go with glitter too and you know see what comes up. Right now I'm on photos. You can also do graphics. So. You know, if you're not sure what you want, go ahead and just search all over. And there's a lot of really cool ones that I'm looking at. Something like this sort of fades down and that's cool. That's gonna fade to black, but I don't want black text. I do want lighter text. Um, and I do want it to all kind of look like it goes together. Um, so what I'm looking for is more of a rainbow that fades into a white or that just fades away period, something like that, that just fades away period and I can have it fade away onto my white text and that's fine too. Um, and so I do want it to be sort of rainbowy, fading. I'm getting a lot of different colors here. I can also go up to graphics and see if there's anything graphics that I like. And here I'm getting a lot more of these fades. So those I like a lot more. Something like this one I really like. This is probably the one I'm gonna go with. It's got a lot of really cool sort of fading into it. And so whenever I've got something and I just want the top, I can just crop off the bottom. So for example, I just want this top part. Um, and so I'm going to do something like that. I do have to have it wide enough again so that it, oops, covers. Hold on, let me send the text to back. Okay, so now I've got that. I can bring it up. So I can bring this up as high as I want. So it's going to kind of look rainbowy at the top of each letter and then it's gonna sort of fade down and then it'll just be white at the bottom. And so I can put this as high or as low as I need to and crop as close or as far away as I need to to kind of get the effect that I want as long as I make sure I'm covering the entire word. Um, so I'm thinking something like that. So the bottom of the word is still gonna be white, but I'm gonna have a lot of cool kind of glitter up at the top. And I'm thinking about doing something a little bit similar here with the 100th day. So again, I can look for anything that I like. Some of these are different. So like that one just gives really fine. Um, that one's, if I bring this to front so we can see, bring to front. And so this one puts just sort of some lines over it, but it still gives it that kind of weird look here. So that's kind of cool. Not sure if I really want that one. I do want something a little bit more solid and fading. And so a lot of, again, different ways I can go. I can also do hundredth as one and then the th as, as a sort of another. So I could do th or maybe one hundredth in gold. Maybe one hundredth in gold might look good. So here's a gold glitter, or I could just search for gold glitter if I want to. So here's gold. And I could say, hey, I want 100th to be nice and golden. Still have it sort of fade down. I'm gonna send, send that one to back. So I've got the 100th with my gold fading down. Let me bring that down all the way to the very top edge. Perfect, and then again, I could do a similar thing with the TH if I wanted to, or I could do a different color. 
So you can really sort of play with it. I could make it solid gold on the TH if I wanted to, or solid silver. Um, since I am sort of going with a glittery theme, I'd like to sort of stick with the glitter, but I could do random glitter over it, um, random gold dots over it. So, you know, you can sort of play with, you know, anything you want. So for example, here are just some gold flecks. If I bring those gold flecks like that and put them right on top of the TH, uh, you can't really see them too well. If I zoom in, yeah, it's a few dots, but it's nothing really thick. I want something a little bit thicker. I'm deciding if I want to go with the gold again or if I want to go more with a different color. Here's another gold one that sort of fades out that I could use. So again, if I wanted to do that, and that one's kind of cool. I kind of like this one better than this one because it, it curves and so it's giving me a little bit more coverage. And so I do like the more coverage that I'm getting on this one. Hmm. So much so. Is this the same? I can always overlap too. So if I want to overlap to make it a little bit, you know, even darker or even more solid, I can. So now it's definitely more solid and coming down. And I can play with different shades too. So again, all, all different kinds of shades of gold. I could even put some silver in there or other gold or just other colors of glitter. So there's just so many different ways I could go with this and they're all really fun, but you know, let's just go with this for an example. Otherwise I could probably be playing here all day. Um, so it's fun, but you, you do actually have to finish the design. So here's what I've got in terms of cover covers. So this is going to go over, um, over the top of our frame. So this is gonna be my 100th day of school mask. So up here where it says happy 100th day frame, I'm just gonna change this to mask, that way I know. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and download this. So it doesn't need to be a transparent background. Um, it can if you want, doesn't matter. Um, but I'm just gonna go ahead, hit download. It's still a PNG. And I'm gonna give that a second to download. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to Photo P. Now this will be really quick. I'm just gonna put a clipping mask on it. I've gone over this in a lot of videos in the past. And so if you haven't seen those, um, you can look at any of those to get a little bit more depth. I'm gonna do this pretty quick, but I'm just gonna jump over to Photo P. Again, you don't have to pay for it. You don't have to create an account, nothing like that. It's totally free. I'm gonna hit open and then I'm gonna start with my frame. And I'll give it a second to load. And here is my happy 100th day of kindergarten frame. And now at the top left-hand corner where it says file, I can click that. A menu will drop down. The third one down says open in place. I'm gonna click that. It will pull up your downloads again. And from there, you're gonna hit your mask and go ahead and open your mask. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna put your mask right on top of your frame. So now I've got two layers over on the right side here. You can see this is the background layer. That's my frame. And on top of that, the top layer here, this is my mask. So for my mask, I'm just gonna use a clipping mask. So up at the top again, where it said file, if you move over until it goes to layer, you're gonna click on the layer tab. That will bring down another drop down, and about halfway down, it will say clipping mask. If you click on that, it's going to create your clipping mask just like that. And so that is pretty easy to do right there. Okay. I did get a little bit of movement on my happy, and that's why I've got a little bit of darkness around the edges. Um, I can go back and redo it, or if it looks okay, I can keep it how it is. I'm gonna keep it as it is now. I'm gonna come up to the top corner where it says file, and now we're gonna go ahead and export this. So about halfway down now, you're gonna see export as, and if you move over to the right, you're just gonna select PNG. And if we give it a second, a little box will open up and it will have all the details in it. Here it is. 
So right now you've got your title and I have it happy 100th day and it's gonna um, title it whatever the original image that you opened was. So if you wanna rename it here, you can. So I could put happy 100th and I could just put glitter. I'm keeping it as a PNG. It's still 4,500 by 5,400 pixels. Um, in terms of quality, you can move this up or down. It's gonna change the size of the image. Some images that are really detailed, if you download it at 100% quality, it may be too big to reopen in Canva. Um, so if you bring it down to about 95, usually you can open anything at that point in Canva. So I just usually use that. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. And from here, I can jump right back over to my Canva page. So here is my Canva page, and I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna move all of these out of the way. So we're just gonna get rid of all of that. Matter of fact, if I want to, I can get rid of the whole frame, doesn't matter. So let's just, yeah, we'll just go with our blank page. And so now from here, I'm gonna go ahead and open up what I just downloaded. So to do that, um, if you've got it, um, where you can drag and drop, that's great. If not, you can go over to the left-hand tabs where it says Uploads, and here is where you can upload anything from your computer, so I can put Upload Files, it'll bring up my downloads, and I can upload what I just put on. Okay, and so now that it's done, I can just click on that, close this tab here, and now I have my happy 100th day of kindergarten that I can move around, resize, whatever I want. So I can make it as big or as small on the page as I need to. And so that's sort of how we're gonna go ahead and get sort of these, um, you know, different masks for the text. So here I've got like my half glitter mask, um, half glitter here. You know, this is sort of a fading glitter, but it's solid. Here's my cool rainbow. I do really like the rainbow look. At this point, if I wanted to put a frame around this, I could. So for example, it looks really good on this black, but let's say at this point, I really wanted to put it on a white shirt maybe. So I could change my background color here to white and you can see what it would look like on a white shirt. You'd kind of lose some of the bottom of these texts. That one you can see just because I had a little overlap on my frame from when I kind of moved the happy around. Um, but if I wanted to then put a frame, I could. And so this has a little bit of a black. I can do a black around the whole thing. You wouldn't see it on a black shirt, but it would allow you to see it if it was on a white shirt. So just to show you how I do that, I would go ahead and click my, um, my image here, come up to where it says edit image. I can use my shadow feature. And at this point, if I wanna do glow, that's what's gonna give me a full outline. So I can click on the glow, give it a sec. These three little lines here allow me to open up the options. So from here I can click on that. I don't really want any blur and I don't want any transparency. I can select whatever color I want. Here I am gonna go ahead and just stick with black because that's easy. And then here's where I can put the size of the outline. So I could make it really dark outlined like that or I can make it really you know, relatively thin. And I do wanna keep it relatively thin so I don't want anything too dark but just enough so that you can see it. If I put it on a lighter color, it will still pop. So I can click apply. It'll take a second for all of it to finish finalizing. And you'll see when it does, cause it'll crop smaller, there it is. And so now you can see it's got a little outline. So if I put it on a light color shirt, now you would be able to see it just fine on a light color. If I go back to a dark color background, so I'll go back to black. You really can't see the outline cause it blends in with the, bl the black and it still looks really good. Um, so if I do it this way, I can have it on any color shirt that I like. Oop, there it is. And so that looks kind of cool. Now, this by itself could be a design, but you know, this is supposed to be kids. It's supposed to have a lot of flair to it. So I'm gonna add some other elements just to make it a little bit um, more fun. So one of the things I wanna do is maybe get some confetti in the background. And so to do that, I can come back up to elements and now I'm gonna do a little search. I can do confetti. Ooh, and so now you can see under graphics, you got lots of different really fun confetti looking graphics that you could use in the background if you wanted to. Um, and I'm looking for something probably closer to what I saw at the top, um, which was kind of far spaced confetti, something like that might look cool. It's got a lot of different rainbow colors to it. Now I can make this fill the whole page. Then the confetti is really, really big. 
or I can make it fill part of the page, let's say like half the page, depends how far apart I want these spaced, and then I can just repeat. So let's say I kind of like it here. It's, eh, let's see if I can get half the page here. Somewhere around there looks pretty good. I'm gonna take this, I can duplicate it, so I can hit Control D, that essentially copies the image. So now I've got a duplicate image, and I can just move it over like that. And so now I've got it on both sides. Now I am gonna send it to back too, so I'll show you on this one. I'll put, I'll right click, go ahead, put send to back. It's gonna send it to back, so now the text is over the top. I can do it on this one too. Go ahead, send to back. And now my text is over the top, so I've got some confetti there. And now I can move it down. So again, I can click it, hit Control D. It's gonna make a duplicate copy. I will bring that one whoop, down. I'll do it one more time, Control D, and move it over, good. And now send both of those two back, send to back, send to back. And so that's how I can get some confetti sort of in the back of my image, but I still have my text on top and I'm filling the whole page. So that looks kind of cool. Let's say I want to put in some, you know, fun kindergarten things, maybe some school things. I can put school supplies and see what comes up. And if I know what I want, then I can always search for that too. So sticking with my graphics, I can see what comes up under school supplies that might look good. So maybe like an apple or a ruler, a pencil, some scissors. And so I can see if I find one that looks good or something that I want, then I can just do a search for that. So let's say as I'm looking through here, I kind of want a pencil. So let's go ahead and put pencil. And now I can pick from different pencil graphics. And again, something fun, something that you know looks like it would go on a kid's shirt, but looks like it also goes with the design. I'm looking for something relatively simple in terms of just a pencil. That one looks kind of cool. It looks pretty realistic. It's bright. I'm gonna tilt it, maybe shrink it down. And at this point, if I wanted to, let's go like that. You know, I can add it anywhere on the page that I want. So like there's a pencil. I can do the same thing. Maybe I want a crayon. And there's different color crayons. And so, you know, like here's a green crayon. Green crayon looks kind of cool. Let's say I want to flip this one over. Maybe I want to put it down here. Now I can also put it behind my text. So I could put it here and put send backwards. And now I've got the crayon behind my text. That kind of looks cool. Maybe I want an apple for the teacher. Again, any kind that's kind of more just that stereotypical. This does have some shadows to it, so it's not flat. Um, this one's a little bit more flat. So when I'm looking at the different apples, there's apples that look a little bit more 3D and have the shine to them, apples that are a little bit more flat. Again, make sure that you're trying to pick something that you think kind of goes with the overall look. This one looks very realistic. So if you want a, more of a realistic looking apple, this one's got a good shine to it. Um, this one's a little bit more 2D, but it still has a little shadowing. And so you can kind of decide what you think looks best. Here's a little kid apple, so it's got the little smiley face on it. So depending on what you're going for with your looks, you can definitely come up with some different, um, you know, styles. And so I'm gonna go back up to the top. I'm gonna go relatively simple, but I do kind of like this one because it's got a little bit of a 3D effect to it. And maybe, maybe I shrink this down a little bit. In fact, maybe I make it a little more vertical. Oops, there we go, I'm gonna move it over. And so now I'm just sort of playing with things to get them all to fit the way I want them. And so I can put them in different places, make them different sizes, really try to make everything look like it goes. Maybe some kids scissors if I can find some scissors. Lots of different kids scissors under graphics. So again, I can make them look realistic or I can make them look not realistic. This one's cool because I can change the colors. So right now I've got the yellow handle, but I could make these any color I want. Yellow is kind of cool because it's kind of unisex. So it could go on a little boy shirt or a little girl shirt. 
So if I made them bright pink, it might be more of a girl's thing, but yellow kind of looks cool, but I could change those colors to anything I want, and I do like that. And so you can see how I'm just sort of playing with this. I could put maybe an eraser or a glue stick or anything else down here, just sort of fill the page, make it just really bright. Um, and so that's how, that's how you would do this sort of style of design. Again, you can really play with these. There's a thousand ways to make 100 days of school designs. I have seen a lot that are like, happy 100 days of school, you know, hello 100 days of school. Um, I've crushed 100 days of school. I survived 100 days of school. My teacher survived me for 100 days. Um, just make sure you trademark check everything to make sure that it's safe to use um, and do some research on kind of you know, what was popular maybe last year around this time, but lots of different ways you can go with the 100 day of school niche. So now that I've got my design pretty much the way I want it, I'm just gonna go ahead and download the whole thing. So I'm gonna retitle this up here. It says happy 100th. And I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put glitter or I could just do happy 100th um, or happy 100th kindergarten if I was doing more than one um, grade. I might wanna be specific. So then I could go ahead and kind of redo this whole thing, except switch this out for like first grade or something like that. Um, and again, you can use any kind of colors, any kind of styles you want. I'm gonna go ahead now and download this. I'm gonna keep it as a PNG. It has to have a transparent background here and I can go ahead and hit download. And now this is totally ready to put on a shirt and I can again put it on any color shirt I want because I used colors that would pop, you know, kind of regardless. So it's downloading. If you have any questions about this technique or about 100 days of school or about PND, POD in general, please go ahead, put it in the comment section below. I do try to get back to those. Again, if you have any ideas of videos that you'd like to see, you can put that down there. Um, right now we're rounding out quarter four, so I, go, I hope you guys are having some really good quarter four sales. Um, but don't get lazy, you gotta think about quarter one, we always gotta be kind of looking ahead. So you should be definitely looking at at least January and February, if not into March right now. Um, so again, I uh, hope you guys are doing good. That's all for today's video. If you found this useful and would like to see more videos with helpful tips and tricks, be sure to hit like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss any of the weekly videos. As always, keep growing and stay creative and we'll see you next time.